All right, it's about that time. On top of back to school shopping, getting your kids on a regular sleep schedule, it's a very busy time for parents. You know, you're busy sorting things out, but here's something to think about, and that's vaccines. Yeah, they're necessary to protect your kids before they re enter the classroom this fall. We're talking about way more than just the COVID vaccine. Joining us live to talk about all that from the Long School of Medicine at UT Health San Antonio. Always pleased to be joined by Dr. Ruth Bergeron. She's an infectious disease specialist. Doctor, I want to start with monkeypox because we had a phone bank yesterday with University Health and a lot of the questions that we got yesterday from people calling in were, what should I do about monkeypox? What are, do I need to get a monkeypox vaccine? And should I be concerned about my kids and monkeypox? Right. So um, what should I do about monkeypox? Should I be concerned? Should I get a vaccine? What we know is that this uh, virus, which is a cousin of smallpox, a milder version of smallpox, um, can be transmitted from human to human. But the people who seem to be getting it are people that are having close personal skin to skin contact. So it's not only sexually transmitted, you can get it from close up close and personal skin to skin contact from somebody else who's having lesions. And in some cases, there may be respiratory particles, not airborne, but respiratory droplets that may transmit it. So th those are the risk factors. Uh, up until now, we've heard about 13 cases in Bear County. So it is legitimate to be a little bit concerned and be paying attention. But who are the folks that are getting it? It is people who are having sexual relations with people who have monkeypox or people who are having multiple partners. That's where we're primarily seeing monkeypox right now. In the world, it certainly has also been transmitted to children um, just from being from close physical contact. So children could get infected, but we wouldn't expect to see that sort of thing happening unless we had a much um, higher prevalence of monkeypox in the community. So for now, um, the way that we control this disease is that people who have been exposed to a case of known monkeypox uh, can get vaccinated. And that vaccine needs to be given within four to 14 days of the known exposure, and it can significantly reduce the symptoms. It may not prevent infection, uh, but it, if it's given timely, it can prevent the duration of the symptoms. I guess it's just knowing when you've been exposed, which is the other thing. The other, uh, so yesterday, so Steve mentioned that yesterday we had, we had that phone bank here. The number one thing that parents wanted to know about was COVID boosters regarding their children. So could you tell us about that, the different age groups and when it is appropriate for kids to get their boosters? Sure. So um, lots of guidelines about that exist and lots and lots of uh, vaccination resources are out there. Um, I was actually contacted by SAISD earlier this week, and SAISD is getting organized to have vaccine clinics um, at various school venues. And so um, if you haven't had your child vaccinated, do so now. Realize that it takes weeks before the child will be protected because it's a series of vaccines, weeks apart. And so if you wait till the day school is starting, your child will be going to school without the full protection. So you'd be really smart to get your child scheduled now uh, for their first COVID vaccine and you'll be given instructions about the follow-up vaccines to complete the series. Uh, Dr. Bergen, how concerned are you about parents just thinking they don't need to get their kids vaccinated. I mean, how, are, how concerned are you that, they're, that the, the anti-vaccination movement that kind of seems to have come to the fore, most notably with COVID, may spread to other vaccines that kids really need to get before they go back to school? Well, um, of course, there, there are rumors and there's rumors beyond rumors and they're problematic. I encourage people to try to um, go to their primary care doctors, their trusted source of medical information to be advised about vaccines. And while the risk to children of having a terrible outcome from COVID-19 has always been low, there's this to think about. Children are capable of getting long COVID. They are vulnerable to long COVID. And this has impeded any number of kids from being able to fully participate in sports or to excel at school like they normally would. So we really wanna help our children have the best possible chance. 
and getting vaccinated against COVID-19 helps you do that. This vaccine is really safe. Um, people have heard about risk of myocarditis. That's in a fairly particular age group of adolescent boys, but even in those, the risk of getting a heart inflammation response from the vaccine is actually far lower than the risk of getting some sort of heart inflammation from COVID-19 infection itself. So this is a safe vaccine. Uh, it will protect your kid from getting long COVID. And furthermore, there may be people in families where there are elderly or immunocompromised folks. And even though the child who contracts COVID-19 may do great with it, um, there are consequences for the people around that child. So those are all good reasons to get your kids vaccinated before school starts. Before we let you go, doctor, talk about what you're seeing with the local COVID numbers and what you're seeing in the hospital right now as far as COVID goes. Right, so our, our local COVID numbers are high. Okay, they, we are in a high risk group. That's not just something that um, people at Metro Health are, are putting out there. We meet the criteria based on what the CDC has recommended for how you evaluate community levels. And so we have greater than 200 new cases per 100,000 people per week in San Antonio. We're at 324 being greater than 200 puts you at high, especially when you combine it with new hospitalizations due to COVID. And we're at 20.6 with the cutoff for high being 10. So we're double that. And we're right around the percent of hospitalizations being occupied by COVID-19 patients, pretty close to 10%. So we are legitimately by the definition at high risk and that has implications for what we should do. And the CDC spells that out for us. And it is recommended that when you are in a public place, crowded or not, you're in a public place, you wear a mask. You wear the best mask you can find, ideally a KN95 mask. Um, and you want to avoid um, non-essential indoor crowded activities where possible. And of course, everybody needs to complete their vaccine series and people who have not been boosted need to get boosted. And we know, of course, that everybody over the age of 50 is recommended to get that fourth booster. Um, a lot of us were slow out of the blocks to get that fourth booster, uh, but now is truly the time to get it when our community is at a high risk level. Now's the time. All right, Dr. Ruth Berger, and thank you so much for joining us today. We so value your insight and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you. Thank you.